Greetings folks, this is a magnifying glass that I got off of Amazon uh, a little while ago and uh, I bought it really just because it was, seemed quite handy uh, for some of the features that it has. You can you can use it as a, on a stand so that you could at a pinch if you really had to you could um, set it up and uh, use it as for inspection and not have to hold it uh, so that was one thing although I don't really use it like that very much but as you can see it's it'll uh, move uh, into a variety of different settings and uh, so what's convenient for whatever you're doing uh, but most of the time I just use it like this uh, and it's quite handy as well because it's got uh, two different magnifications on there so if you're trying to look on a, a surface mount device and you're trying to look, look at the part number on it uh, that's pretty handy uh, this isn't anywhere near good enough um, but I came to use it the other day I don't use it very often it just happens to sit there on the desk ready for me to use it's just like a, kind of quite a handy thing to have and i, I tried to uh, use it and uh, it was dead as a dodo and I've only had it a couple of months or so and um, sure enough I've got the batteries out it takes three triple A's there's one just on the, underneath here so four and a half volts and they're all uh, flat as a pancake so uh, I couldn't quite work out why it well I could work out why it was what was probably happened was that I'd left it switched on so you'll see it's got um, three states as off there's like half uh, brightness which it doesn't flicker in real life, but you might be seeing it flickering uh, on uh, on the uh, camera there. And there's also a full brightness one as well. Um, now, what I think I did was I must have because I, I I took it apart and um, and had a little look see inside the the electronics, uh, which if I can get it in, they're all underneath here, which we'll have a look in a sec. And uh, I measured the current, and the current when it's off is is negligible under a microamp. So I think what happened was was that I just left it switched on. So I thought, well, that's a bit irritating. So uh, let's see if we can do an auto off. So uh, I took it apart, and um, I'll show you that now. Let me see if I can grab a screwdriver. Let's uh, take it apart. Now this is post modification. I'll tell you what the modification is, uh, but there's um, you'll be able to sort of see what's what's inside here. So, um, I'll just zoom in a bit. There we go. And let's uh, just get the focus in on there. Hopefully that's focused in. And um, yeah, so you'll see there that there's um, the battery. Uh, there's a red post plus coming there from the battery and a, and a minus for some reason in white there's a blob chip just here which I've now disconnected uh, there's a transistor just here PMP transistor uh, and there's a sort of 1k resistor which used to go to the blob chip which came from the base so it's basically pulling down and that would switch on the transistor which then switched on the LEDs which are here and there's a 10 ohm resistor in series with the LEDs here uh, there's nothing on the other side other than a, a little jack so you can have an external DC input um, and uh, a switch uh, which is what I demonstrated earlier for the different states that it has I, I don't want to come to it and find out it's got a flat battery all the time so what I did you'll notice here there's a little uh, bit of rework if you like that I've done here I put a PIC 10 F202 on there and I programmed it, the PIC 10 F202 uh, to use the same transistor and the resistors as before uh, I've, I've chopped the uh, blob thing out so I've just got a sharp knife and cut the traces uh, for, that there was powering it and uh, feeding the base and uh, from the button as well and I put this PIC 10 F202 uh, on there and uh, so what it does now is when, when I switch it on and I'll switch it on now oops there we go um, it lasts for about I think it's about 15 seconds or so and it automatically switches off and uh, which Maybe we'll see in a moment. Um, anyway, oh, there you go. So that hopefully is enough time for you to do something that you might want to do. Um, and equally, um, it's not so long that it drains the batteries ad infinitum and becomes a frustration. Now you might say, well, you put a microcontroller in there, it, that's going to be seeping current from the um, four and a half volts battery here. Well, I chose this chip specifically because I've done some investigation on some of these older PIC 10s. Uh, and some PIC 12s as well, they have to be a little careful with the PIC 12s but they have um, current in sleep in picoamps not nanoamps, picoamps 
and um, certainly if you go low voltage down to two volts which is the minimum spec on these you can go down to under 100 picoamps about sort of I think 30 picoamps or something is the smallest I've seen at five volts it goes up a bit so this one is drawing about 500 picoamps at five volts but if you work it out on these triple A's so they've got about um, 1000 milliamp hours on these alkalines and uh, if you work it out with 500 peak amps, uh, it's going to be 228 years before you run out of battery. So I think these batteries are going to be well and truly dead before this microcontroller has drained it. Um, so that's the leakage current on this. That includes any leakage in the transistor and everything as well. The whole thing is 500 picoamps is the um, measured uh, leakage on this. Um, so that's, uh, that's basically the, the, uh, the device itself. I'll just screw it up again. Oops. There we go. Make sure it all works. There you go. Half full done. So it cycles through the three states. Uh, and as I say, if you just leave it on for a um, certain amount of time, it will just decide it's going to switch off, which uh, I think it's about 15 seconds, something like that. Uh, there you go and goes back to its 500 peak amp drain current. So what's inside? What did I change? Um, let me just show you the schematic. Okay, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. And uh, refocus. So um, this is the original circuit. You've got your four and a half volts here. Uh, there's a little switch which pulls down to ground. There's this blob chip here. Um, and there's a 1K resistor which pulls down on this PMP transistor which it switches on. Little current um, uh, limiting resistor here onto the LEDs. And uh, that's it. And there's three states, as you saw before, off 50%. It's actually a duty cycle of about 250 hertz. 50% duty cycle uh, or 100% just on all the time. I just popped the scope um, scope on here just to see what it was doing, and sure enough, that's what it what it did. So I just emulated that on the pick. So let's have a look what's the pick uh, got in it. So this is a pick equivalent, as you see, I just basically dropped it in there, and uh, uh, it uh, so essentially I just uh, chopped off uh, chopped off this, chopped off this, chopped off this. Um, there was also, there was, um, uh, oops, there was of course a, a ground connection here, didn't bother getting rid of that, but uh, chopped off the other two uh, with a sharp knife and then just popped in this PIC 10F202. Uh, it's in a SOT23 package and uh, so just popped it in there with a little bit of rework and Bob's your uncle. So now, hopefully, I w the only time I'm going to have to replace the batteries on this thing is uh, when they've leaked all over the place. So there you go. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Cheers.